13.5, apply the law of cosines. Hey, I have three sides, and this is crazy. But here's my area. It's one half AB, and all the other shapes wanna be me. Sum up my angles, 180. Just a review of the same slide that we saw yesterday, the law of sines and the law of cosines. If we're dealing with a triangle that is not a right triangle and we need to know the measure of some other of the angles or some other of the sides, that is when the law of sines and the law of cosines come into play. We use the law of sines in the angle-angle-side case and angle-side-angle case quite easily. But in the side-side angle case, we saw that we had this ambiguous case where we had either 0, 1, or 2 triangles that we needed to check for. Today we're going to be using the law of cosines. And we use that when we have three sides, side-side-side, or two sides and their included angle, side-angle-side. Again, like I said yesterday, if you go to use the law of sines and you should have been using the law of cosines, you'll just see that the problem doesn't work and you'll just change your approach. And I'm sure that you'll mess up at some point and I'll make sure that you mess up in class so that we can see this together. So what is the law of cosines to begin with? Well, if we have side lengths A, B, and C as shown in this figure here, then A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. We can also do it for side length B. B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B. And C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. You'll see that the side length that we're solving for is the same as the angle here. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared and then you just do minus 2 and those two letters and cosine of whatever angle and cosine of the angle corresponding to the side length that you're looking for. You'll see the b cosine b and the c and the cosine c. So that right there is a lot of cosines but I hope this is striking a bell to some of you and you're thinking Oh, the Pythagorean theorem looks a lot like that. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Let's deconstruct this for a moment. Let's look at a right triangle and let's let C be the hypotenuse. Angle C would then be the 90 degrees. This is angle A and this is angle B. So let's go and use our law of cosines. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2 a, B, cosine, C. In this case, we said that C was 90 degrees, so let's go ahead and use that. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine 90 degrees. Well, what was a cosine of 90 degrees? If you can't remember, look back at your unit circle, and right here we were at 90 degrees, and the coordinate right there is 0, 1. And remember, cosine corresponded to the x stuff. The x coordinate is 0. So we get c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times 0. And that's why we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So cool. Now let's go ahead and do this problem. I see that I have an obtuse angle, so I'm just going to make one of those angles obtuse. Here's C, A, B. Side length A is 22. Side length B is down here. That's 15. And then angle C is 108 degrees. You'll see that I have side, angle, side. So I should be using the law of cosines. The missing side length that we need is C, so we're going to use that C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB. Remember C is the side length we're looking for, so we'll have cosine C. We don't know what C is, so C squared equals A squared, 22 squared, plus 15 squared minus 2 times 22 times 15 
times the cosine of 108 degrees. Let's go to our calculator. Again, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Mine keeps going back to radian, so I have to keep changing it. All right, so I'm gonna do this all in one line here. 22 squared plus 15 squared minus two times 22 times 15 times the cosine of 108 degrees. Keep in mind what I just found was the answer to C squared. So to get the answer to C, I'm just gonna do the square root of second answer. And we get 30.215. Now I have my missing side length, but I still need my other two angles. Personally, I just usually go back and use the law of sines now because I have all the information about C now. So I have sine C, which is 108 degrees over C. You definitely need to use that part because that's the only side and angle that you have all the information for. You see that B, I don't have all the information for it. A, I don't have all the information for it. But sine C over C, I have all the information for. So I need to use that one. And then I can just use either or the other, sine B over B, which is 15. And then I think I'll just multiply both sides by 15 because that's all I really need. And so I get that sine B is equal to 15 sine 108, I'll just put that in parentheses, over 30.215. And then since that's sine B, to get rid of sine, I do the inverse sine. and that will give me B when I put that in my calculator. So in this one, I'm just gonna put what's in the parentheses in first. So the numerator is 15 times sine 108, close the sine parentheses, close the numerator parentheses, over, and I don't feel like typing in that 30.215 thing, I can just use second answer, because that was the previous thing. Second answer always calls up whatever the last line was. So that makes my life a little bit easier enter and then I actually wanted to do the inverse sine of that to get my final answer so I'm just going to do the inverse sine of second answer and I get 28.174 degrees while I have my calculator up I'm just gonna finish this problem because I know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to add up to 180 so to find angle A I'll just do 180 minus B, which was just my answer, minus C, which was 108. And that is going to be my answer to angle A, 43.826. So we got angle B using the law of sines, and then to find angle A, we know that all three angles add up to 180. Now in this problem, we have three side lengths and no angles, so I definitely need to use the law of cosines. So side A is 19, side B is 26, and side C is 31. Something really, really important is that you want to start by finding the largest angle. You do that so that you can make sure that the other two angles are definitely going to be acute. If you're gonna find an obtuse angle, you need to find that first. Because remember that we use the law of cosines first step, and then we're gonna go and use the law of sines. Well, what happens when you use the law of sines is that you always get an acute angle popped out. So what if you hadn't found the obtuse angle first? Then you would have done the problem wrong. So we want to guard against that, in summary, what you need to do is always make sure that you find the largest angle first. Remember, the largest angle is opposite the largest side. So in this question, I want to solve for C first. So in this question, I want to solve for angle C first because C is the longest side, so it must have the largest angle. So I'll go and do C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. C squared is 31 squared equals A squared 19 squared plus B squared 
26 squared minus 2 a b cosine c to solve for cosine c i need to first get these two things over on the left so 31 squared minus 19 squared minus 26 squared is equal to negative 2 times 19 times 26 cosine c now let's just divide both sides by that negative 2 times 19 times 26 to get the cosine c all by itself So now I solve for cosine c. Of course, to get rid of the cosine, I just do the inverse cosine of both sides. And when I put that in my calculator, I will have solved for c. So let's go over to our calculator. So the numerator parentheses are super important in this problem. 31 squared minus 19 squared minus 26 squared. That whole thing divided by, and then my denominator parentheses, negative 2 times 19 times 26. I really need all of these parentheses. I did not put excess parentheses in this problem. I put the numerator in parentheses and I put my denominator in parentheses. Press enter. And now to get what C is, I need to do the inverse cosine of second answer. And that will give me C, which is 85.588 degrees. So in this problem, we actually don't have an obtuse angle to worry about, but regardless, we got it out of the way. Now we're going to go back and use a lot of signs. I must be using the information that I have about C, because C is the only information that I have a side length and an angle length. So I'll do sine C over C, which was 31, equals sine A over A, which is 19. Let's just solve for A first. Why don't we just multiply both sides by 19? Now I've isolated the sine A, so I get sine A is equal to 19 times sine 85.588 all over... 31. To get rid of the sine, I just do the inverse sine of both sides. And now when I put this in my calculator, it will pop out A. So the numerator parentheses, 19 times sine of, well, I can just do second answer because it's sitting right there. So that was sine of 85.588. And then close those numerator parentheses divided by 31. And then, of course, I need to do the inverse sine of that answer, inverse sine of answer. And I get 37.668 degrees. The only missing piece of information now is angle B. And, of course, I have angle A and angle C, so I can easily do angle B as 180 minus angle A minus angle C. And I get 56.744. Next problem, the lengths of the sides of a triangular plot. So I have three side lengths. Again, law of cosines. The way that I labeled my picture, angle C has the largest side length across from it, so I must find angle C first. So I'm again going to be using C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. So I have 175 squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. Same thing I did in the other problem, scoot the 120 squared and the 150 squared over to the left. After we've gotten the subtraction out of the way, then I can go dividing. So 
So now I have solved for cosine C. To undo that cosine, just do the inverse cosine of both sides. Turn to my handy calculator. Numerator in parentheses, 175 squared minus 120 squared minus 150 squared over that denominator, which must also be in parentheses. Now take the inverse cosine of that answer and we get 79.962 degrees. In this question, they just said find the largest angle, so I am done. Finally, we're going to have Heron's area formula, just like in the law of sines, we had the formula for the area was 1 half AB sine C. We used that when we had the side angle side case. Now when we have three sides, the SSS case, we're going to get that the area is the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where S is the semi-perimeter. Well, the perimeter is just A plus B plus C, right? That would be the perimeter of this triangle. The semi-perimeter is just one half of that. And so you first calculate S, and then you just put it in this formula. Really not that hard. One quick example, find the area of the triangle when you have three sides. We can go ahead and use that formula. So first we want to calculate S, the semi-perimeter, which is 1 half A plus B plus C. Add up all the side lengths and divide by 2. That'll give us 890. Remember that the area is the square root of S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. And so the area in this case is going to be 890 times 890 minus 750, 890 minus 410, 890 minus 620. I'm just going to put that all in my calculator. 890 times 890 minus 750. Once I do that, I'm just going to do the square root of my answer. And I get 127,075 about. Feet squared. Again, all I did in this question was use a formula. And that's it for this lesson.